This morning I want to spend a little bit of time, answer any of your guys' questions, and I'll just kind of explain to you what happened with you know, this hunk of junk that I'm sitting in front of right now. Uh, this is the old plasma table, guys, that uh, I built two years ago on YouTube. And um, if you guys remember that video, the first thing I ever cut out, of course, my logo. So I did some test cuts with this, and this is pretty representative of the quality that we were getting right off the rip when I first built the table. You guys can see there's some blowouts here on the pierces. That's kind of done in cam. You know, there's a little, not very much chatter here on the edges in the beginning. When I first built the table, everything was really tight. Um, but there was some stuff that I didn't really understand while I was building the table, like weight and torque and motor speed and stuff like that, that um, basically ended up tearing apart these gear reduction units here on the side. These guys right here are a three and a half to one um, gear reduction, and they're really designed for a lighter gantry. I went six feet wide on this thing. I thought I was gonna add a uh, tube cutting section over there on the side. Its weakness was that the gantry is too heavy because I made the table too wide. Um, and it's got this really pretty solid, uh, what is that, three by three tube that goes across the top of steel and uh, the weight of the gantry when it changes directions really fast was slowly making those um, set screws where the motor was turning uh, was slipping. So then I was getting like on that flat spot that they inevitably put um, on those uh, axles, I was getting like a little bit of slack back and forth. And then my cuts started doing really weird wobbly stuff. Basically what would happen is all these letters would start getting blown out. And then the edges here start getting really beveled. I don't know if we can get this to pick up, but right here starts getting a pretty wicked bevel on this. And that's from problems with the torch height control. Um, with plasma, a lot of your cut quality comes from your height, basically your voltage, just like welding. Um, it's super voltage sensitive and you really have to have fine control over that voltage while you're cutting. Otherwise, you end up um, getting stuff like beveled edges. Uh, you end up not getting cut through in places. You have to slow your machine way down just to get your stuff to cut out, uh, which is murder for production business. Uh, you don't want to slow any of your machines down because those are your money makers, you know? So that leads me to the next problem that I had with this machine which is really the biggest reason why I switched to Shop Saber, and that's just the straight up unreliability of this company's shit that they sell. You guys see this? Command, CNC. I am no longer recommending anyone use their controllers because they don't have very good support and they like to blame the customer for all the problems. And due to the DIY nature of this table, it's really easy to blame people like me that are building it for the first time. And I thought that I had a lot of issues with my shop. So I spent countless hours uh, making changes to the power in my shop, um, driving uh, grounding rods in my shop, um, unplugging the machine anytime I wasn't using it so it was fully insulated um, because we were having trouble anytime there was lightning. Literally anytime there's lightning in Tennessee, this machine blows up. So if you're in Tennessee and you have lightning, boom, you're gonna be driving to Texas or shipping your uh, controller off to go and get it repaired. Literally what happens is, I'll show you guys inside these machines, because I, uh, I was dumb enough to buy two of them, as you can see. Each one of these with the computer and the motors and everything that comes with it costs 3,500 bucks. Right here, this card, right here digital torch height control blows up all the time and they like to blame the customer they blamed me for blowing up their part i don't know how many times eventually i moved buildings uh, because they told me that my house power was gone was bad i sent them a video of my power being metered live while cutting and i blew up their torch height control and the voltage at my shop never fluctuated more than two or three volts, which if you guys know anything about electricity, you can have plus or minus 10% volts and you really shouldn't have any issues with any of your electronic equipment. So two or three volts out of 120 uh, fluctuation should not equal anything 
in a properly constructed electronic hardware kit blowing up. But with this system, and this one right here, because I have a second one, so that I would never be down was the idea, but inevitably I would blow up both of them at the same time. So that's why if you guys have been following along the channel, you saw me driving down to Texas all the time to get stuff repaired. Because these things blow up. And if you ship it overnight, it costs $500 to get it down there. Um, if you ship it down there, they don't put you in the front of the line. They put you in the back of the line like everybody else, which I understand. Uh, but then that ends up taking a week or two to get your stuff fixed. And at that point, you either have the choice of paying $500 to overnight it back to yourself, or you can snail mail it ground for like 100 bucks, and it'll show up in five days. So at that point, you've been down for three weeks. Anybody have a business that their main piece of equipment that makes all their money can go down for three weeks and still be in business the next month. I wish I had it like that, but I don't. So that was really the, all the big reasons why I switched to Shop Saber. Um, I can go down to the finances a little bit. You know, really I spent $13,500 building this machine and that includes the plasma power supply um, and the air compressor um, and some of the shop improvements that I had to do like um, electrical boxes and plugs and whatnot to get this thing actually running. But then, on top of that $13,500, um, I was also buying a second one of these for another $3,500. So, real build cost of this thing uh, was, what is that, $17,000. And if you look at that 17 grand and start shopping around for plasma tables, you'll quickly realize you can have a pretty serious machine delivered right to your door that's fully functioning ready to go um, for that 17 to 25 grand range, um, which is what led me to Shop Staver. I just started doing the math on this old table and realized it was a big loser uh, as far as the math goes. But it's not a total loser because it got us started. Um, it was the only way I could have gotten going. In the beginning, I didn't have $20,000. I kind of had to piecemeal this thing out and buy like just the power supply. I bought just one set of these computers at first. I bought the steel and it was just sitting in my garage for months. I bought the gear reduction units and they were just sitting in my garage for months until finally I could quit my job and build this table and start this business. And you know, this is now two years later and it's blown up. We hired uh, seven people in the last three months since we moved to this new building. Uh, we grew 197% last year and it was not possible for me to come up with Seventeen or twenty thousand dollars at the time, like it just wasn't going to happen. I was working full time um, as a field iron worker doing construction, and had two kids and a wife and a car payment and a house payment and all that stuff, and I just didn't have the money. So, if I was going to do it all over again, I'd probably end up building a table just the same way, uh, for the simple fact that I didn't have the bankroll to go out and buy a table and have it delivered. And that's the math I was doing when I was trying to you know, get into this and, and do it seriously at this next level. You add the drives to Texas, um, the time spent learning and troubleshooting this thing, uh, the time spent actually like doing stuff like making this table one foot too wide where the weight was gonna tear it apart because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, all that kind of stuff is where it becomes worth it just to buy a table off the shelf. So from a purely math perspective, it's not worth it to build your own plasma table. Like, yeah, I said it. Maker Table, who built this whole business on the fact that we built our own plasma table, saying it's not worth it to build your own plasma table. Purely from a financial math perspective, you know? So here we have the Shop Saber. Really, I'm trying to get the best tools that I can afford, is what I've come down to. I got tired of buying stuff twice, like this plasma table, like the controllers for the plasma table. Moving forward for the business, I'm really trying to buy the best that I can afford, um, which you know sometimes is painful, but I think on the back end, we're going to be way more successful if we have like equipment that we can totally lean on that never really goes down or is easily maintainable and repaired, uh, that's gonna help our business you know, leap forward really. This is the kind of stuff we're doing, a lot of signs, and we just fill these up as efficiently as we can. And the pierces is really what um, basically fades your consumables the fastest. 
We are changing consumables every sheet. We cut five by tens and uh, plasma has a ton of pierces. On to the shop saber table. The biggest thing about this table is it is super reliable. You call command CNC, you tell them you have a problem. They tell you it's your problem and you need to fix it on your own and you need to do some shit in your shop to fix their table, uh, which makes no sense. But shop saber took them a minute to admit that they had messed up, but once they did, they flew a tech down here with his own set of tools and a hotel and a car and all the parts to replace and fix this engraver right here that they sent me wrong. So um, that's what happens when Shop Saver messes up. They fly a tech to your door and fix your shit. That's what's up. Um, well worth a few extra bucks if you ask me. But the biggest complaint we have on the Shop Saver is it's a bit slow. The old machine, we could get five 5x10 five sheets done a day. This machine, we can get four 5x10 five sheets a day. But this machine never goes down. So we get a lot more signs out the door at the end of the month. Because it is different than the Linux system and the open source one that we built. And um, you don't have as much control. They really kind of dumb things down on it for you. So you can... Um, pretty much give it to any operator. I think it's made for a bigger company where um, you need to just like hire somebody and drop them on that table and have them be able to use it and not mess anything up, which now I'm like starting to appreciate now that we've kind of figured it out. But the old table, I had ultimate control over everything because I put it together. I could really change any setting in there at any time for any reason just to try something out. Um, and they don't really give you as much flexibility. You gotta go all the way back into like the directory file and literally change lines of code where the other one had a digital readout where I could just check some boxes and slide some sliders and type in some numbers and then see how that worked. So I would like it if they had a little better, more involved, you know, user interface on the computer, but you know, what can you do? Tripping out. They're like, this is my shop. I keep waiting for the boss to show up um, <laughs> and tell me what to do, but nobody shows up. It's just me. All right, hope you're having a great Saturday. Hope I answered some of your questions. Good luck with all your business ventures and um, go make some stuff, guys. And please check out my YouTube videos. I've been working really hard on them, uh, trying to get to the next level there and get more subscribers. Uh, the biggest thing you can do to help me out there is share the videos. So hopefully they start taking off and people start sharing them and they start making their way around the internet.